Have you ever met anyone who is so full of energy that makes you question what you have been doing with your life? Well, the founder that I'm interviewing this time, Amit Shia Cheyenne, is such a person. He started his business Homestay, an exclusive tutoring service in Afghanistan. He is currently studying in Beijing for his education master. However, his entrepreneurial spirit has never stopped. He became an organizer of Star Weekend in Beijing. In fact, he helped organize both Afghanistan and China's online Star Weekend COVID-19 over the same weekend. How did he do it? He took full advantage of the time difference between the two countries. Isn't that awesome? Alright, I will let him tell you about the rest of his startup adventure. Enjoy! Okay, so uh, first round, just uh, warm-ups, yeah? Okay, Mac or PC? Uh, PC. Okay, iPhone or Android? Of course, iPhone. Oh, interesting. Okay, tea or coffee? Tea. Okay, WhatsApp or WeChat? <laughs> uh, I prefer WeChat uh, since I I have been to China. Yeah, but I found it more more interactive. But don't you have to like uh, connect to people overseas with uh, WhatsApp? Yeah, I I do have WhatsApp, but but I prefer uh, we WeChat since I can send money and I can do many other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. More functional. That's true. That's true. For me. That's true. Okay. Good, and uh, now to the uh, personal question. Uh, can you spend some time and talk about your background? My only focus was education, so I, I did the same regular education like others. I uh, started from school, then after that I went to university. The first time I passed the, the governmental exam, so I entered to government governmental university called Kabul University which is number one in in in, in Afghanistan and it's really competitive like from 200,000 200,000 students only they recruit uh, 30,000 students which is around uh, 15 percent of, of the, the students so I studied uh, public policy and administration there and I got my my bachelor degree in 2015 uh, after that, I start working with some NGOs and with government. Uh, then in 2018, I just went to Beijing to start my master degree in development studies. So from there, I just get the chance to connect with people and now we are connected with each other. It's nice. Uh, uh, so you're not, you are not finished with master degree yet? I uh, will be finishing in June. Oh, that's nice. Wait, does, does that mean you actually just do all your papers at home right now? Yeah, yeah I'm all, uh, almost done with, with everything. Just uh, got the external reviews. I just need to bring some changes with differences. So it's been passed already. I just got the plagiarism check and other things. Congratulations, my friend. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The papers are the most, sometimes the most boring thing. It depends on what subject you're doing, you know. So uh, if it's not your passion, it's hard to follow, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really hard. It was challenging for me. Yeah. Uh, from the time when I came back to Kabul mm. on February, for mm. one month, I just uh, scheduled to, to put all my concentration on my paper. So I spent around a to 10 hours each day to to finish my paper in a best way possible so my supervisor accepted and the whole department are like now they're accepting they don't have much comments like comparing to others i see i think it worked for me good is there a number of like minimum review that professor have to do to your paper before you graduate something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. first time you, your supervisor is then after that it, 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 it goes for for plagiarism check then after that external reviews uh, the professors from other university are going to review your mm. paper cool cool uh, i read that uh, you have like a uh, sort of a company or something called homestay uh, can you talk more about that yeah sure mm. it's a uh, in three years, we established uh, homestay. Mm. In May 17, it will we will just uh, celebrate the 
23rd anniversary of Homestay. Mm-hmm. So the story started from, from when, when I joined Sara Weekend in 2016 for the first time in, in Afghanistan. Mm. So uh, it was like, like in 2016. Mm-hmm. Then after that, uh, I got uh, in, inspired in, in Sara Weekend to have my own business. I just found it out that, that it's not difficult to have your own business. Mm. But but I, I didn't start it exactly at the same year. I, I needed to, to work to find some job. So I started to work in an NGO mm. with uh, some organization like like UNDP mm. and AWDP in mm. some developmental projects. Mm. Then there in the organization I found it like like I cannot contribute much to the society mm. and they were like like NGO or some some kind of doing some business instead of being non-profit and, and helping people. Mm. So I decided to quit my job, mm. even though they were giving me good salary. Mm. So from there, I, I had this idea of, of looking around uh, what, what is the problem in our society. Then mm. I found it like, like uh, there's a need for, for private tuition services in Afghanistan, since most of the, the rich people and governmental officials they cannot go out, they cannot attend the regular classes and because of the timing we don't have like for example night classes and during the day they, they need to go to office and there are some security issues as well for, for, for the rich people and government officials so mm-hmm. they cannot send their daughters and their their, their children to, to to go to some some, to, uh, some centers for, for studying. So I found this niche and, and the other part was like, like uh, I missed an opportunity uh, beside that. I missed an opportunity to go to Germany. Mm. I was looking for, for a private tuition, uh, a private tutor for myself, but I couldn't find. So these ideas came together. I established the homestay. Now it's been the third year of homestay. At homestay, we are uh, basically, uh, we are providing tuition services capacity building services uh, as well as uh, educational c- consulting services so from that time to now we are we have uh, recreated around uh, 150 tutors in kabul only now and uh, we have been implementing some capacity building projects in afghanistan like uh, the project called promote for women we taught around 500 girls in terms of some uh, courses for them, like short courses in health, uh, healthcare management, English language, and computer skills, so that they, so that we could empower them to to go and work in offices and find jobs. It was more morely uh, skill based uh, education for them, and part of that we had some contracts with the government from Homestay as uh, part of our capacity building services for example the attorney general office we taught their employees uh, uh, in capacity building services there we taught them computer we taught them english language and we had some contracts with other organizations as well wow that sounds like a huge operation wow that's amazing so is it uh, is homestay uh, still going on? Yeah, yeah, it's going on, but now due to the lockdown and quarantine, we are somehow working uh, from uh, from home. Mm. But we do have some uh, contract with with the the other thing that we did there. We have some contract with other consulting uh, consulting services company in China. Mm. Uh, we, we are going to send some students from Afghanistan uh, as part of this contract in order to, the main aim for this contract is to 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 develop a better education market for Afghanistan uh, for Afghan students in mm. China mm. so that they could go and, and, and study there so this whole time while you're studying master degree in China uh, wait which city of China are you in I'm in Beijing. Oh, you're in Beijing. Okay. So uh, this whole time when you're studying your master degree, you, you are like managing your that homestay, the business of homestay? Yeah, p- part of my study, I mostly I was mostly working uh, uh, 
on the weekend. Oh, uh, okay. most, most of the time I was writing some proposals and reviewing some proposals that our uh, other staff were drafting that. Oh, that is amazing. But, so... but I, I was not too much engaged, engaged with, with the staff. So you have uh, other like co-founders or manager to help you, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, my, my brother is the co-founder, oh, my elder brother. Oh, so okay. I was sure that everything is going very well here. Yeah. So I was not worried too much. Oh, okay. Wow, that's quite a story. So uh, after your master degree, do you plan to go back and or you plan to stay here? Uh, actually, I, I I plan to go back hmm. because uh, uh, even though most of my friends suggested me to to do your uh, a PhD degree there then, hmm. and finish everything and come back, hmm. but I think it's too too early for for doing PhD. Yes, I think if, when you do PhD, you're already grown up and old, so. I want to come back and gain some work experience and uh, to, ha- to gain some practical knowledge and mm-hmm. work with some, uh, beside homestay, I want to specifically work with, with some develop- developmental NGOs here, international, specifically UNDP mm-hmm. and other organizations or, or government in order to, to scale up my, my capacity in my field of study. Excellent. So, uh, have you participated in the like the SAR weekend in Beijing? Yeah, yeah. The the good story about the SAR weekend is that uh, I was engaged with the SAR weekend in Afghanistan. Mm. So the first time when I went there, uh, we had one month to to start our lesson. But uh, before starting my lessons at, at university. Uh, the first thing I did, I connected with the community leaders of Sort of Weekend in Beijing, and I participated the the APEC uh, Women yeah. uh, Tech Stars Global uh, Tech Stars Global Sort of Weekend in Beijing, and I was really happy. To, that was last year, right? If I remember, right? 2018. It was 2018. Oh, two years yeah. ago. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, in September. Oh, so the, my okay. first activity in Beijing was was to meet a startup community in Beijing, and it was nice. Uh, when I went there, I was I was thinking like like it would be different, but I found it quite similar and the same thing. But uh, what we did here and uh, we were, I, I've learned a lot from those people. From mm. we shared experiences and mm. and it was really nice. And I feel like like. Uh, I'm part of uh, like like a bigger community now. Now I can go everywhere and find my 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 friends. Cool, very cool. So, what do you think about Beijing and the uh, staff there? Because I I have never been to a startup weekend in Beijing, nor have I met anybody from Beijing uh, who are in startup. Tell me about it. Uh, can you make it a, a bit more specific? Oh, or I mean, I, I like uh, in terms of it. comparison between like uh, the stuff that you see in uh, Afghanistan versus the stuff you see in Beijing. Uh, is there anything special mm. that you can tell? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, of yeah. course. Even though the the process of sort of weekend were the same in yeah. in Beijing and Afghanistan, but what I found like like in Afghanistan, uh, you see many challenges and uh, like like you see there are a lot of opportunities for, mm. for all the participants they can discuss uh, different things and all of them are important but when you're in beijing you'll see like like the topics are completely different like in afghanistan they, they will focus mostly on on problems like uh social problems or mostly focused on social entrepreneurship Mm. But in Beijing, you will see like like they're more like tech in high level AI and other stuff. Mm. But in Afghanistan, it's it's different thing. Mm. And uh, I I remember one time we invited a, uh, an American entrepreneur to be our judge and give us a speech. Mm. So he was telling like like I decided to come to Afghanistan because I see many opportunities here that I cannot find in in. In, in America, yeah, most of the parts are already occupied. But here, for example, if you can, there's no 
electronic payment system. If you have enough money, you can just uh, start working and, and, and be the owner of an electronic payment system in Afghanistan, as well as some other opportunities, for example, in, uh, like we have in Beijing, but we don't have in Afghanistan. Yeah. So and, uh, all in all, I mean, like, like the topics they're discussing are different, but the program is the same. Mm. The pitch are different, right? So the, the, the direction, I guess, the, or the categories of uh, the pitch is different as well, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the challenges are different. For example, in most of the hackathons, we may have challenges. Which challenges are, are you going to, to solve? Like, mm. like, but in Afghanistan, you're solving something else. In, China, in Beijing and China, you're solving something else. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, in general, do you like Beijing? Yeah, I like it too much. I too like much? the food. <laughs> I like, yeah, I like the food. I like the the different communities there that you can join and the events. Every time you can see, you can find events. Uh, uh, events that that you like to join or like based on your own preference, like. Many uh, events are happening there. You better just choose which one do you like and which one is matching you. So, and the other thing is, is uh, people come from different uh, countries there. You can meet uh, like like a diverse community mm -hmm. in Beijing. So I like it. I really like it. That's good. That's great. I should uh, because uh, the last time I went to Beijing was when I was. Uh, before when uh, before when I was twenty, so it was a long time ago. I haven't been there since, so <laughs> I should visit it sometimes. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, must be. You will see many changes. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So uh, this like uh, I will ask you a few more general stuff question. What do you think are like the best business ideas starting like this year? What are the what are some of the best trend that you see in terms of uh, startups that uh you think is uh, will be very popular would be really popular yeah you mean around the globe yeah 2020 mm. i think there are a lot uh one of thing one of the thing is like like working from home and uh, people are seeking to to find a better way to communicate and to uh, to work from home yeah. as well as to study from home. That's uh, like, for example, in our services in Afghanistan, even we are decided uh, now we are working on on online based of uh, online platform of home stay mm. in order to connect with people because now everyone believes that, like like this is the the future. Yeah, we're not going to attend uh, like uh, ordinary classes or we are not going to. To spend time travel from one place to another place, as since it works, like since people can can do can do things from home from from distance without uh, seeing each other in person. So uh, I think uh, then they 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 they, uh, they they just find it like like this is the future. It will go on. So I I just. So many of them, like many of companies, they're working, they're trying to to find a better solution for that to make the world stay connected. And, and I think that's the trend. Yeah, working. I think it's a very good home. trend as well, because uh, uh, how, to, how should I say this? Because uh, last year I joined like a seven star weekend. And besides that, I always like trying to go to conference like Every week I will go to one or two conference and each of the conference is like from my work to the conference is uh, an hour and then come back is an hour. It's just su such a huge waste of time. I don't, if they have like live stream it, I can just go home and relax and then watch the live stream, you know? So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this has to change. Yeah. And uh, another thing as well, because uh, the work culture in Hong Kong is kind of like, uh, the, your your employer really cares about how many hours you put into your work even though 
even though that uh, your quality is still the same, even if you put more hours on it, 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 it doesn't matter because mm. it's very traditional, you know. So having yeah. you know the the ideas of working from home, you can still get your work done is a very good trend because you know people need to be with the family sometimes, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the other thing is like like. Uh, people. The other thing is, like, people find it out, like, like, how important it is to stay connected with with each other. Yeah. Like, like, when they stay alone, they're searching for some some channels, some ways to stay connected and then to to just reduce the the stresses. And I think that's also interesting. I I see, for example, uh, I just read in uh, a report about the number of users in social media mm. are uh, like active users are increased much yeah. more than, than the than the time when there was no crisis yep so that that's how how people want to stay connected now they understand the values so so it changed the like uh, i can say like uh, like people are trying to find the best way to to feel like they are uh, beside each other and they're close to each other. Yeah. For example, we are calling on Zoom. We we are not using uh, like like other stuff because it has more options and it makes it like like more real. Yeah. We can see each other. We can share a screen yeah. just like we are sitting beside each other. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, another another thing I I can say about the. Yeah, which is in trend, I think. Yeah, it's a very good trend. Uh, uh, the statistics has come out that for the last few months, especially in Hong Kong, right? Before there was like a bunch of food delivery app and night service in Hong Kong, so they are not doing well because people don't use them that much. But ever since the virus, they have been the all of the service has been going like stack skyrocket. They need to hire more people and. Uh, like the online shopping system, people are going crazy on it. Anything that you can do online is uh, just increasing in terms of uh, sales. So there's uh, some benefit into in this uh, you know crisis. So people can still do the daily things without um, going outside of the house. That's good, right? So mm. yeah, I, so, I think uh, we can overall conclude like like the trend is mostly on on technology yeah. and the, the, the focus. Anything in terms of technology that comes up nowadays can can win the the market. I think. Good. So as a st- startup founder, right? Can you name a characteristic that a startup founder must have? I think. Take your time. Take your time. Uh, yeah, there, there can be a lot of characteristics. I'm also I also have a lot of problems uh, that have been failed many times. That's the second question. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. You have been for many times, but the characteristics, I, I mean, like the patience could be very, the, the first thing I can say. And the other thing is to believe like, like they can succeed. Yeah. Self, self-belief, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Self-confidence. They, they should be confident enough that they, they can be a good entrepreneur and a good uh, startup, uh, a good founder, like, like we can say, mm. and the uh, passion, passion, yeah, really, yeah, yeah, uh, really important in a startup. Exactly. So what should entrepreneur never do? Mm, they should not expect uh, the result really soon. They will face a lot of challenges. Uh, uh, during this journey, but uh, if they have uh, enough confidence and if they have belief, they will they they will not fail. And the the thing that they should not do is do not expect like to get the result really soon. Yeah, they should uh, be patient. Look yeah. for, for 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 longer. Yeah, for longer vision. Yeah. Can you name a few tips for star founders? Uh, I can say like to engage with your uh, with your startup. Engage means to understand what you are doing and uh, how it works, and to have vision for your startup, uh, as well as to have a mission for your startup. 
And uh, the first thing you need to do is to 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 work on the business plan of your startup. And the other thing is to to consult with with experts. That really helps. Cool. That's a very good answer as well. Consult with the expert. You need people, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, given that you, uh, your startup, right? You did it after university. So, what age, in your opinion, is the best age to start a startup? I think as early as you have an idea, as early as you think, like like there is the gap, go and start. It doesn't matter. You're even ten or even fifteen. It doesn't matter. As soon as you start, uh, that much you would be uh, succeeded. I think you because you can you have more time to to gain experience, and uh, I think as early as possible. It's good. It's a good answer. Yeah, it is. Okay, so as an entrepreneur, right? What makes your make what makes you roll your eyes every time you hear it? What what drives you crazy? Hmm, I think. Uh, for me, for me, because we are doing educational consulting services, uh, the uh, best the best part is not the profit. Yes, uh, that that drives me crazy. Like we got profit. The best thing is like like I see we can make changes. Uh, we can make changes in our society. We help people, and uh, as long as I see this this change and our contribution to the society. So I feel really happy, and it makes me to be, to stay motivated and and uh, be energetic. Oh, so you don't get annoyed easily by others about your startup? There, there are people around you that that uh, that gives you negative energy, like like by saying it's not working, asking you to show them the result. But uh, you should just. Uh, Stay straight to the to the what you're doing. Uh, for example, for me, uh, even though we we have discussed in family, I convinced my father and my mother that I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to start this one. We are helping the society this way, and we are earning money like this. And uh, I I I like 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 uh, I pitched everything to them, mm. and uh, I presented everything to them. They they supported me, mm. but I said. There is possibility that we may not succeed. Mm. So after two or three months, uh, because I knew it will not, uh, we will not receive, the, we will not see the result too soon. Yeah. Uh, my father was the first one who told me like, it's it's okay if you fail, just just leave it. But I was still uh, insisting that I'm going to continue. Mm. Uh, I think there are people for spreading negative. Uh, Thoughts, but but you should see what they are doing ex- exactly, like what they did, their background. I I, I didn't see anyone who are doing business uh, told me anything, any negative thing or gave me negative energy. They always praise me like you did very good job. You see, in your age, people don't know how to how to how to, uh, for example, do very small stuff. But now you have the company, you have this. Is employees and you're doing very well. Yes, that's all right. That's uh, quite moving. Yeah, because uh, sometimes you just have to believe and then you have to keep going. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, Cheyenne. Yeah. Uh, as a Star Weekend organizer, right? What mm. do the participant gain during Star Weekend? What do they gain? For me, as an organizer, yeah, the only reason for me to organize a sort of weekend was because I have the business right now, and it's due to my participation in a sort of weekend. Mm. I, I see most of the participants may not start their business now, mm. but the only thing I really, I'm really happy about a sort of weekend. All the participants have this mindset, like they like, have the ability uh, to start their business mm. and. If they start someday, they can make it. That's all. I mean, the only thing uh, in a startup weekend, uh, the one thing, like, like, or the first thing that uh, the participants get is, like, like, they would be inspired enough to have their business one day, sooner or later. Good, good. 
this to encourage people to join Star Weekend. Okay, okay, good. So the next question would be, uh, what is the best pitch you have ever heard? You have, you must have listened to a lot of pitches, right? So what is the best pitch yeah. you have uh, that you have ever heard? Do Do you want me to to say something about the pitch? Yeah, or pitch yeah. it again? Yeah, no, not pitch it again. Just uh, tell me like what is it about that in, that like uh, inspire you or you think is a really good idea. It was uh, sort of weekend in. Uh, there was a, a the problem the the. The public problem or the problem in the society that every one of us just faced that problem, including the, the judges and everyone, but no one pointed out. He found and, and he pitched in, a, in an energetic way. It was about the 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 public toilet. When, when he was preparing, the first thing was like I was just volunteered there. I was even I wasn't even the organizer. Mm. The thing was like. First of all, all the other groups were, were like like telling him, "Oh, does your toilet has have uh, like like uh, Wi-Fi, something like that?" Mm. Saying like this, but when I saw they they got first position, even the judges uh, decided to give them money, but due to the rules and regulations, mm. uh, we didn't allow the judges. We said it's not allowed to give cash to to the team. Mm. But that would be speech that inspired me a lot. Like, like uh, it doesn't matter. Like uh, we see to the big thing. So what, what was really the what like, was the exact the way pitch? He, the exact pitch was like like uh, there are very few public toilets. Yes. So in in the around the city. Yeah. But uh, there are toilets, uh, public toilets uh, that are managed by the government. Mm-hmm. But they're not in good situation. But mm. they are in very good places. Mm. Their locations are really good. But no one is cleaning them. The government has other priorities. They cannot reach out to that. Mm. So he just went to all of them, took their pictures, mm. and made the note. Then he said, like, like each day, how many people are visiting that, and how many people are taking taxis to go back home when they have something to do. Oh, uh, so, that's clever. Yeah, that's clever. Yeah. So what what he did was like each person when they come, we will take for example around zero point zero five dollars from each. Mm. He calculated what, he, for example, he just surveyed ten spots around the city, mm. very crowded places. He said each day mm. around. Uh, 500 people mm. are entering in this. Mm. If we get this much money from them, mm. and we put two people in each uh, in each toilet to manage one cleaner, one cashier to to collect the cashes, mm. we bring them like like a modern way of of toilets. Like there would be mirrors, everything, and something for washing hands. Everyone will go there, yeah. and everyone is willing to pay 0.05 dollars. When they calculate, when he calculated all these stuff mm. one by one, the profit of this business was I I, if I don't make mistake mm. was around uh, around I think nine nine thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars each month the the net profit mm. as well as around twenty to forty people could get job. So that was the best idea I I've ever seen like like. If if we co- if we see zero point zero five dollars, it looks very small amount. But the way he calculated and he managed it, and he saw the he bring it in a big picture, mm. it was really amazing. Yeah, it is. It is very good to good that he account for that. Yeah, because that like public toilets, that kind of stuff is usually people avoid to think about, right? They think this the issue of the government mm-hmm. so we just ignore it you know until it get better magically but it never did you know so yeah that's yeah it. people think like like there is only one uh, one place like like how many people will visit 100 if we collect for example even uh, one dollar mm. hundred dollar it's not too much mm. how can we but the way he calculated like he spotted all these locations like 10 20 spots mm. uh, 20 locations uh, and how he he like like uh, put all of them together and make a general conclusion for that and, and that was really amazing. 
Yeah, it was. So this is your best pitch, right? That that's the best pitch you have ever heard. What about the worst pitch that you have ever heard? The worst pitch. There are lots, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. Uh -huh. Because uh, I I believe like everyone who pitches, mm. he wants to say he or she wants to say something mm. that he feels is a problem, or he might he or she might have faced this problem. Mm. But sometimes what makes it like we 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 just consider that as worst speech is the way they deliver mm. or the way they they recognize this this challenge. For example, uh, we can say like uh, some people don't know how to present it or how to define it. Mm. And I think all the pitches in the start of weekend I hear was was really good. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. But also, you are a very positive person, so that's why you picked that. Right?